Dirty Little Secret by TCSNXS. Meeting you was fate. Becoming your friend was a choice. But falling in love with you, I had no control over. Author unknown. But sister, are you sure you can handle it? Slash's question was perhaps rhetorical, but pertinent nonetheless. Luna was enjoying a bagel and coffee while Slash was enjoying a rather large salad with a vinaigrette dressing. Since Luna's return, the regions of the sun and moon often enjoyed a private lunch in time. It helped to get away from the stresses of ruling a country and gave the immortal sisters a chance to talk without fear of eavesdroppers. Luna masked her contemplation behind a sip of coffee before speaking. She can. She has mastered all she can without making her a head or two taller and giving her the benefits. She is also a hero many times over and a current wielder of the element of harmony. She's done everything she's been asked to and done so without complaint. More than that, I trust what is in her heart. Sledge picked up on the undercurrents of Luna's response. She never doubted her sister's judgment or the capabilities of the pony in question. Designates were chosen or chosen for a reason, even without their knowledge. In truth, Luna had become quite close with the cadre that was the elements. She was closest to one of them, and all of this was a big step. It hasn't been done since Cain saw those years ago. Granted, she's as capable as any pony since Star Swirl, but are you certain she will accept? Luna understood her sister wasn't questioning her decision. She was simply playing Discord's advocate, and she appreciated it. I'm certain, but it's her choice in the end. Of course, I would never force such a thing on any pony. What Luna was asking took the power of two alicorns to do. Cadence was still in her teenage years, compared to the length of time alicorns lived, and didn't possess much power compared to her aunts. Luna seemed set to go through with it, but Celestia wasn't sure. I need time, Luna. Celestia spoke at length after finish, finishing all, all of her tea. It's a lot to consider, and I need to be sure. Luna rose from the table that was their little world during their launch ends. She tried to her sister and nuzzled her. Take all the time you need, sister. I have to start the night court. Celestia watched her sister depart and sighed while shaking her head. The regent of the sun knew the pony well, but such things were always tricky propositions. Once explained, most ponies understandably declined. Most viewed as a curse in the end, but sometimes, just sometimes, they accepted. Dear Luna, please be careful. How wounded will you be if she rejected it? One of the benefits of holding a royal court at night was few ponies bothered to show up. After a very light schedule, Luna instructed her major domo that she wasn't to be disturbed. She quickly hoofed it to her private bedroom, locked it, went to the balcony and flew west towards Ponyville. With the summer wind flailing in her auroral mane, Luna kept up a quick pace, not for lack of time, but simple excitement. In truth, becoming an alicorn had its benefits. Nigh immortality immort and invulnerability, magic enough to level mountains, enhance strength and flight ability to rival the greatest of Pegasi. But with it came a powerful invitability that every other pony you knew would succumb to the eventual moment of mortality. A pony without the strength of heart to learn how to smile again would be driven mad. Something that was left out of the history books during the time of Nightmare Moon was that such regrets drove Luna into madness. She was determined that no pony else pay for a mistake she could have prevented. Not that Luna was so overly worried. The pony she sought helped to cure her of her madness, and being on the bus business end of the element's judgment, she felt the strength of the individual ponies involved. 
most keenly felt was the one she sought. She gained a keen understanding of her will. Seeing her destination was now closed, close, she touched down behind a bush and approached the building, the stealth with the pra practiced thief. After checking to make sure she wasn't spotted, she drew closer to it. It was a building she, building she snuck in and out of many nights, but she sought to avoid a scandal for herself and her friend. Actually, mere friend may be a bit more appropriate term. Since returning from banishment, Luna spent a lot of time with her, and the two had become very close. Other than the couple, Celestia was the only other pony to know, and Luna could trust her sister. The dirty little secret between the two that had that only lasted this added zest to their romance. It was like something from a lonely wives' romance novel. Luna would play the proper princess by day making judgments and proclamations, entertaining various dignitaries, and generally keeping the country in trim shape. By night, she would often seek out her forbidden lover and re reason for existing. Luna watched her mare friend through a window and chuckled. The object of her heart's desire was drying her hair before settling in for bed. Luna noted she purposely left the window open a touch. A wicked grin crossed the face of the lunar regent. Oh, my love, how often we do this. Luna whispered. The entire place was silent. Shortly after, the light went out, and she moved to the edge of the dwelling. With the entirety of the place was quiet, Luna willed her magic into being. Luna managed as soft as aura as she could muster, and took on a gaseous form. Floating up and into the window, she willed herself back to her normal form. True, she could have simply teleported in, but this was much more fun. Luna looked over the prone form of her love, and her heart fluttered. Whether she knew it or not, the sleeping pony was the embodiment of all the desirable traits one could seek in a lover. She was exceptionally kind and generous, never complained about the card she was dealt, had an underrated sense of hu humor, and was honorable almost to a fault. All of these things combined to make her a beautiful creature, inside and out. As much as she was, as much as she was oblivious to certain things, it was cute in a way. Much like her slightly exposed flank. Luna watched the sleeping pony's breathing with a sense of fascination. A smirk returned to her face as she un considered the uncovered rear and her rather sharp horn. She craned her neck down a bit and poked the end of her horn into the surprisingly soft skin. The sleeping form's eyes shot open and quickly glanced around the room, feeling around her flank quickly. She shrugged and went back to sleep. Now the poke laid her in the same spot, caused her to fly towards the lamp on the nightstand next to the bed. The sudden invasion of light revealed a grinning Luna in all her glory. Concern it, Luna. I asked you not to do that. Alajag quietly hissed while Luna's eyes sparkled mischievously. The End